able to attend, but I appreciate everybody coming this evening. Before we begin, we have, um, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Miss Yvonne Padilla, uh, Miss Padilla, to you. I don't know, I can't, is everybody see her? I feel like, again, it's the Brady Bunch and I can't see everybody. Um, so I apologize, but I just like to, um, Yvonne does a lot of behind the scenes work uh, with the PowerPoints, with the Zoom links, and making sure that um, we're prepared as possible for these meetings. So I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Padilla. Um, tonight, we have our school uh, psychologist with us tonight, tonight, Ms. Angela Jacobson. I wanna thank you for coming this evening. We also have our cultural liaison, Ms. Irene Ventura, who's here tonight. And also I think joining us or will be on shortly will be Mr. Miller, our assistant principal. So I wanna thank all of you uh, for being uh, on tonight. <clears throat> we have a, a, a short agenda and um, our agenda for this evening. Mr. Robleski, sorry to bother you, but uh, Mr. Miller is present now, as well as Ms. Uh, Janelle Gillis as well. And Ms. Gillis is on as well. So Ms. Gillis is a 12th grade dean. Uh, thank you for attending as well. I can't see you, but I know you're on there somewhere, as well as Mr. Miller. So uh, thank you all uh, for the team for coming tonight and supporting our families and our parents and our kids. Our agenda for this uh, meeting tonight is... Or I guess we're going to start with our um, mission and our, our goals. Our mission is for the district is creating worlds of opportunity for every learner, all succeed and all belong. That aligns directly with the Columbia Heights High School of creating college and career ready graduates. Um, tonight, our core values, which align with our core values, core values high school real expectations. Um, tonight, we are highlighting all seven of them. Um, we believe in community tonight, everybody participating. Um, we're trying to do our best. We are doing our best in uh, forging head, uh, ahead in excellence during a pandemic. Uh, we're collaborating together. We're showing integrity. We respect one another. And during these times, we absolutely have courage. And our teachers and our students are being innovative with Zoom and trying to give the best quality of education we possibly can during these pandemics during this pandemic. Our agenda this evening is short. Um, Ms. Jacobson's gonna talk uh, briefly about our social emotional support for our kids. Mr. Miller is gonna talk a little bit about PSAT. Uh, Ms. Yvonne's going to just take some notes and uh, unmike people. Um, instead of doing another survey, we just like to get people's uh, thoughts on the virtual conference that we have. We're gonna talk about parent view. Our mid semester grade reports are out on parent view. We're gonna talk about decision, decision making and, and uh, students in the building. We're gonna talk about the tech support that's new and communication with teachers. So at this point right now, I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Jacobson to talk about on um, these trying times of kids not being able to uh, have that social and emotional support at school and being supported by their, their classmates and their staff. So Ms. Jacobson. Hi, everybody. Um, I just wanted to, you know, first of all, just introduce myself. Like Mr. Robleski said, I'm Angela Jacobson. I'm the school psychologist. My phone number and email address are listed there and you can contact me anytime. Um, I did, there are a couple tips that I've been trying to go through with many of the kids too. I know that they've been really getting stir crazy. And now that it's getting colder outside, it's even harder to kind of connect with friends and get out of the house. But there are a couple things that can really help. And one of those things is keeping a regular routine. So, you know, when they get up in the morning, make sure they get ready and they get dressed and they're ready for class and sitting up and have a glass of juice or something before school starts. The second thing to kind of keep in mind is eating well-balanced meals. Um, at school, you know, we provide a lot of breakfast and lunch and there's, there's fruit and vegetables and all of those kind of things. And I know it's hard when kids are at home um, to keep those well-balanced, healthy meals, but that's really going to help them um, be able to focus more in school. And if they ever do get COVID, if you're healthy to start with, it will help um, fight that as well. 
Um, another thing that really helps children is taking movement breaks. So when they get those, those breaks between classes, get them up and moving. I know a lot of them probably just go to their technology in between and then they're just connected to technology all day long. So getting some movement breaks, you know, go outside, take the garbage out, walk the dog around the block real quick, anything to get them moving a little bit will be helpful for them. Um, another really important thing is that I've been talking to a lot of students about is making sure that they connect with friends and, and or family. Um, if they're just sitting at home um, texting people, it's not quite the same as having open conversations. So give a friend a call, set up a Zoom meeting. A lot of the kids are teaching me about some of these online games they can play with each other where they're still, they're, they're active and they can see each other, but they're playing games and they've been really fun to kind of look into and it's really important that they, they do get to laugh a little and have that socialization during the day. Um, and then one other really important thing, which is gonna get harder as, as winter is upon us and it gets dark really early, but getting outside, fresh air is a huge, huge piece and it can reset you. Um, if you are having trouble concentrating or anything like that, just getting out and moving, like I said earlier, and getting some fresh air and some vitamin D is really important. And then we do have a website under the COVID main page, um, and there are a ton of resources in there for families. I encourage you if you are needing help with food, shelter, with holidays coming up, any of those kind of things, there are resources everywhere in there. Um, so feel free to connect with that web page and reach out if you need anything. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Angela. Does anybody have any uh, general questions? Individual question, questions about your child, please contact uh, Ms. Jacobson personally. Please don't do it on our, our video, but she's more than willing to help out. So just asking uh, why we have Ms. Jacobson here, if anybody has any uh, generalized questions for her. I, I feel like the teachers in the uh, classes, a lot of times we call it crickets, a lot of crickets out there, but um, if not, uh, Ms. Jacobson, uh, Jacobson's uh, email address and phone number is there as well, and it is on our webpage. So Ms. Jacobson, thank you for your time. Thanks for supporting our kids. <clears throat> if I don't see you, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Um, next up is Mr. Miller to talk about our PSAT testing. Uh, Mr. Miller. Yes, good evening, everybody. I'm going to talk a little bit about the PSAT National Merit um, Scholarship Qualifying Test. Historically, we usually take 10th grade uh, PSAT scores and take roughly the roughly 30 to 35 students that scored the highest on the PSAT their 10th grade year. And then we give them an opportunity to take the PSAT National Merit Test their junior year. Uh, this year is different. Uh, the, uh, the current juniors didn't have the opportunity to take that test in the spring because of uh, the pandemic. So we uh, analyze data, testing data, uh, with our juniors, and we did select about 35 students that are, that are gonna come, come on campus here at the high school and take this test. It is in January, it's at the end of January, so it's gonna be January 26. And we're, we're getting, we just sent out a permission click to those parents to give them permission to come on campus to take that test, okay? So uh, with the, the PSAT National Merit Test, if your son or daughter scores high enough, they will be put into a pool where there's lots of scholarship monies available. So if they, if they score high enough, uh, they, they will have an opportunity um, to be selected for scholarship monies. And then, Yvonne, I think I have a slide on up, upcoming tests too, coming up, other big tests. Yes, perfect. Um, so in the spring, it's big testing uh, across the board at the high school, but for juniors, there will be an SAT day. You'll get more information on that. Um, as of right now, um, and this could change, 
but it's it's scheduled to be on campus on April uh, 13th. So as of now, um, it's on campus for the juniors. So that's a, that's a free college entrance exam. Uh, if you feel comfortable sending your son or daughter to school, I highly encourage uh, you do that. So your, um, your son or daughter can, can take that exam. MCA testing, that's gonna be in April too. Um, those dates aren't on there, but I have them in my head. Uh, they're gonna be April 20th and 21st. Um, so right now those are um, scheduled to be uh, on campus also. And then the AP, if you have any, um, if your son or daughter is in any AP classes, um, those tests are also scheduled to be on campus. As of right now, things could change, but those exams are in May. Okay. I have a question here. Are we all going to take the MCA? Uh, 10th and 11th graders take the MCA exams. I, I know there was a question about uh, Ramadan and uh, I'm, I'm, it's April, I can't remember the first date in April, but um, we we don't make these days. We've been working with um, MD, uh, college MD, board as well right. as the state to acknowledge those days and to move them. Um, you know, unfortunately during AP testing as well, um, we, we, we continually um, make that request of those different entities that are not recognizing um, those days. We, we have no control over those days. We can um, look at those again, the MCA testing. Matt, I'm not sure the window, but we can sure address that and take a look at that. But we, we're, yep. our hands are really tied to the dates they give us. Absolutely, yep. Any other questions? Can I just chime in for a clarification on PSAT too, if I can expand on what Ms. Mr. Miller said, um, if you're wondering like if they score high enough what that score is, that score is actually determined every year based on all of the students that test. And so it's based on when they're taking it as a junior, it's based on all the juniors in the nation. So there's not a standard number. Like if my child gets this score, that's high enough it's different every year based on the students that are testing. So just a little additional info about that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gillis. Great, um, <clears throat> thank you for that, Mr. Miller, Ms. Gillis. Um, we had <clears throat> virtual conferences um, for the had, first time. Oh. I, I had one question. Um, I don't believe the juniors took the did they take the PSATs when they were a freshman? I, I, they did not. So usually they take the PSAT when they're, they're in 10th grade. Right, yeah. so we analyzed MCA data um, and looked at some other data points from the district office for the selection of the, the PSAT National Merit Test. Okay, I'll email you about something about that separately. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, we did uh, virtual conferences for the first time. Um, this go around, it is, we're gonna do virtual again. Um, again, due to the pandemic, it's the 17th from 4.15 uh, to 745. Um, the link is there, myconference.com. And we are, we are looking for feedback um, on how conferences went for, for you guys. We did want to send another, another survey. We've been hearing people, people have been surveyed out. So we are just, uh, wondering if we could get some feedback from people, if you'd mic off so we can just take some notes, that would be great. And Mr. Roleski, just a clarification, the link is still not active for the following conferences. So they still cannot sign up. So we will be sending communication like a week and a half before conferences this time to two weeks so that way you all parents can start signing up for it.
Is there any feedback in any that you like it, that you didn't like it, um, what you like about it, any, um, any questions you have regarding having virtual conferences? I thought it was much easier than regular. Um, I was able to do, I'm usually, if I try to meet with all the teachers, I usually take about, it almost takes sometimes three hours to do it. This time I was able to get all the teachers in in an hour and a half and meet with all eight teachers. I thought the quality of um, interaction was great. Um, and I thought it was quite easy to be able to do it from home. I actually, in some ways, preferred it um, versus having to um, wait in lines, um, unexpected lines for the regular conferences. We kind of heard just a note, <clears throat> the teachers felt they were better prepared to speak with parents and guardians based on the list that people pre-signed up. So they had an opportunity to have those conversations uh, ahead of time or be prepared ahead of time. We heard that and I think people heard the same thing is that <clears throat> staff didn't feel as pressured um, as much as parents sit sitting in line when they knew they had a and then it wasn't cutting a parent off. It was, you had this much time and we had to move on. So I, uh, from a, a staff perspective, they really saw some benefits to that. And it sounds like um, uh, you did as well. So thank you for that. Anyone else? I'll, I'll just say for the conference we had, it was with one of the deans. Um, you know, we get, we sent all of our questions to the Dean ahead of time. Um, you know, so that made, that made our conference a lot more efficient. That is a great idea. Yep. Um, you know, some positives, just so people know, I think some positives, if we can ever pull positives out of a pandemic, one thing that we are hearing, and we did take some phone calls and emails prior to this meeting, uh, we had a lot of positive res uh, responses like we're getting tonight, that it seemed to be more efficient and effective this way. So this is something that we're looking to do in the future, um, just so people also know we are looking at even parent um, meetings to be doing them virtually because um, some people have made mention that I can go blank screen, listen to what's going on and still prepare dinner for my family. Whereas before I'd have to make a choice of whether I had to go to the meeting or if I wasn't going to cook for my family. Um, the the uh, ability to watch it on tape, the parent meetings, they said was a huge benefit as well. But for conferences, um, that's something we're looking at as well as parent meetings, moving forward, doing them virtually if we can. So. I have a question about how many classes do we have to pick for our conferences? It all depends on the teacher. Like in my case at my child's school, I usually pick the classes where their score was lower, their grades were lower. Oh, that way I had a conversation with those teachers, but it's up to the parent to know how many classes they wanna take. I could tell you from the report that we run regarding the number of conferences every single teacher's schedule was full to the top. So every single teacher had all the conferences filled. Yeah, I have a question too. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, uh, my question is if we have to make a appointment, a appointment for call to the Dean too, because we have a lot of questions for my older daughter. She's in so grade about um, how is everything doing with her? I don't know if we have to make appointment to or talk to them on the phone and if they have interpreted too. Yes, you can also, if you need interpreter in Spanish, Ms. Ventura is here and we're gonna have her information coming up here. So you can reach out to Ms. Ventura so she can help you with the Spanish portion of it and to help you to coordinate a time to meet with the 
with the dean as well. Okay, thank you. I, I just I know we are working on trying to come up with a more streamlined way for parents who need interpreters to get that ahead of time. That is a gap that we did see and that we're working on to see if we can uh, perfect that link where we can add a feature that says, do you need a interpreter? So we're working on that right now. Appreciate um, it, thank you. Switches, but we're working on it, so thank you. Oh, Appreciate thank it. it. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, suggestions that you have regarding conferences? I do wanted to ask one question. I know that the conferences were set up with 10 minutes for each parent to meet with the teachers. I just want to know if you felt that 10 minutes was a enough amount of time for you to meet with the teacher. You thought it was too much, you thought it was too little. What is your uh, opinion regarding that? Perfect. I, I do, I do just want to comment. I, I think it, I can't remember the name that popped up. I think it was Izzy Reynolds. I think um, our, our, our staff has uh, hopefully one of our goals is to have open communication with our parents and guardians. So if you weren't able to get in, um, our expectation this next round is that you our, our staff and our staff is willing to do this. So it's not a force. Um, they're more than willing, if they were too full, to send them an email and we'll communicate that out um, to make sure that all Pam, all families are, are taken care of that want a conference that get it. I agree. Um, I just want to make sure that we don't fall into some sort of confirmation bias with it being just participants getting back to you and you really don't have a sense of the ones who are kind of on the margin and maybe fall by the wayside. That's all. No, great, great point. We, um, what, one thing that our staff did bring up is that there were some um, parents and guardians that they would have liked to talk to um, that they, they wanted to partner with the parents on uh, to make students uh, be perform better. And we're working on a way, um, how do we reach the people that we really need to reach? And I think that's a, um, that's a struggle in every school district um that we have just this short period of time or window of conferences and how do we get the partners we want in that really need to be in to get that uh support so you know it's it's absolutely we're that's another thing we're looking at um of how we can do that so we're, we're working on that as well Excellent. I got to say, I like the earlier conferences, not quite so close to the end of the term, too. I like that looks good. So thank you. Hi, can I say something? Please. Yes, go ahead. Okay, I'm a bad at, um, I didn't listen all the, I just came in the Zoom. I'm sorry. I didn't hear all the um, information. But I know the situation we are right now the, for the distance, but I have five kids under age and they're all in, you know, distance now. And it's difficult for me sometimes. I get the machine called me saying the child is absent and the child is in front of the computer. I can see they are in class. So we have a lot of things we need as a parent, maybe other parent. I don't, someone have to solve while we try to help like more kids. If you have two kids, three kids, sometimes you can see them. But if you have multiple, like five kids I have, they're all in a distance school. And at the same time, helping them cooking and, you know, doing other stuff. It is so difficult to watch them be a, you know, a parent and be a teacher, be a principal, all that kind, you know, it is very tough for us right now. Anybody hear me? Oh. 
Okay. Thank you for that. I know we, uh, I think, um, I, I missed that my speakers went out on my computer, but I can talk with Miss Yvonne uh, and Mr. Miller later on that comment. Uh, I, Dan, can I talk or Mr. Robles? Yeah. I, yeah, I can address that. I think uh, the concern is there's, there's lots of students or lots of um, children in school right now doing distance learning and having some trouble with attendance and maybe getting a phone call saying they're absent, but mom is watching their child on the Zoom class, uh, if I heard that correctly. I think if, if you're having trouble uh, with attendance, I think uh, an easy way, at least this is what I would do if I had this issue at home, I would call the attendance line and, and correct it with, with Miss Helen at the front, front desk, and then, um, if there's more confusion, I would reach out directly to that teacher. And if you need any support, please contact the deans or, or Mr. Miller or myself. We'll be more than happy to assist you with that. The one thing we want to make sure is that we have correct attendance. And ma'am, I think uh, Ms. Helen, uh, in a conversation with her earlier, I think you had a conversation with her maybe. Thank you. Yep, thank you. And if I can just hit on one other thing too, we talked about this actually with, we've talked with this about with our students and we talked at our first parent meeting about, that's also another reason why the piece of a student having their um, camera on can be so helpful um, because you'll see even on people's screens, not everybody has their first and last name on. And so sometimes if a teacher sees the student they could do more accurate attendance. I'm not saying your child didn't have that, but that's just one thing for everybody to hear. Of uh, If your child is saying, I don't wanna do the camera, whatever, it's just another reason that it can help with attendance too, so they can see a name and a face. So just another idea and tip there. And that's a great point. Uh, being in some uh, classes on Zoom, um, I, I will say, at the end of the meetings, we've had some uh, screens up that are not with their cameras on. And, you know, a handful, I'm, I'm just gonna be honest, we've had a handful that are sleeping. So um, if we would recommend, uh, I know I can put you guys to sleep too. So I hope if you're blank screen, not sleeping, but it's always uh, one more way to be engaged is by having the camera on. So just uh, an FYI on that, to uh, encourage your child. It also goes back to um, being dressed for the day. I'm getting ready. I can just make a comment. Uh, I walked in the office today uh, with my a suit on and my uh, dressed up and both Miss Yvonne and, and Helen asked me why I was dressed up. And I said, I haven't dressed up since March. I needed to. So, um, I think we're all struggling a little bit with this Zoom and not having kids in. Um, I'll speak for myself. I'm, I'm struggling immensely with this. I hate it. Um, but I do believe, and again, I keep saying this to you guys, I do believe what our teachers are delivering is one of the more quality educations right now out there. It might not be the best, but I can tell you what my, my daughter's being delivered right now isn't even half, not even half of what our kids are getting. So I wanna applaud our teachers for, for and our kids for moving forward because it's a struggle in my household. And I said this before, I'm coming closer and closer. I'm waiting to see what happens here uh, after the winter break. And I might be making a decision of where my child goes to school because it's, it's, it's difficult. So I apologize for venting on that, but this is a struggle for everybody. Can I make one more comment on attendance? Yes, ma'am. It doesn't seem to always be about the kids aren't recognized as have, as being in the class, but if they have trouble getting on, like just the internet or just a, a technical glitch, they might get on 10 minutes late or something. I have to reboot. And some of the teachers are like, yeah, I already reported it. I can't fix it. So personally, if it's a class, I'm not getting bent out of shape on my two. If it's fine, you list as absent, but you were there. If it get, you know, it's occasional. I'm not too worried about it. Should I be calling in? I mean, I have not been worrying about it. 
We will talk to our teachers about that. We have, okay. um, we've really tried to focus on being flexible. Yep. And so, um, and we've had, I was on a call today. I was on a class today and I know one student struggled the whole time. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Hollerman, I'm going to call him out. Mr. Hollerman and choir was able to uh, recognize that and, you know, sent the student a chat saying, I see you're having problems. If you can continue, uh, I've got you marked here. So that was my experience. And it's a shout out to Mr. Hollerman and choir is that he was being attentive of what's happening. We will remind our teachers as well to do that. Thank you for that. Yep. That's great. Uh, hi, Jacob, I have a question. Please. Yeah, uh, my son is the first year in high school. He's ninth grade. So he's struggling in uh, mad algebra. So how, how he can get in health? So he need more help to get go. If he's having struggles in math, if you would reach out to the teachers and uh, even reach out to his dean in an email or call them, they should be very, they're aware of support. So we have supports in place for students who are struggling. Uh, just let us know, um, contact your dean and we'll be more than help, happy to help. Okay, thank you. All right. All right. Um, as we're in uh, the, the 21st century and everything's becoming more virtual and paperless, um, to activate your parent view account, Miss Irene uh, is more than happy to help you out. Um, first quarter, or we call it, it's called a mid-semester progress report. Uh, we like to call it first quarter grades because that's what it is, but it's... Um, They've been posted on your Parent View account. You can look those up on Parent View if you don't have one. Uh, here's the number for Miss Irene. I believe Miss Irene, we did, and Miss Yvonne, this was uh, a tutorial on how to get on your Parent View account. Uh, is is it posted now? I don't want. I'm sorry, I didn't. I'm not I'm not sure. I think I lost Miss no. Yvonne. No, it's not posted. I'm sorry, I'm having some light issues over here in my house. Um, no, there is, it has not been posted. As soon as when we post this, this parent meeting Thank is you. gonna be posted. So we're gonna be posting the parent meeting video as well as the parent view tutorial videos and another video that Miss Irene is gonna be making interpreting these, this meeting as well. And we're gonna get those out. I apologize, that's on me. You did tell me that, I apologize. Yeah. My ADD is kicking in. It's late. I apologize. Um, thank you for doing that, Miss Irene. Yes, I want to say that in the videos that Miss Irene put together, she took some time and she is detailing every single part of Parent View. So you're going to learn how to go into the account and know what every feature of Parent View is there. So a big shout out to Miss Irene for putting that together in English and also in Spanish. Thank you. Um, I just, um, I just, there's, there's been some conversation and I just wanna clarify for this meeting, the um, decision-making of having kids in the building, uh, when that's going to happen. That's a, a district decision. That's not a, that's not my decision. Um, so the district uh, makes their decision on whether we're doing distance learning slash heights from home, a modified hybrid and the different hybrids we have. That's all based off of the COVID numbers. They use those numbers uh, from the uh, Anoka uh, County site. We look at Columbia Heights, Hilltop, Anoka County. We look at surrounding Hennepin uh, cities and Hennepin County numbers. And our, our number one goal is to keep people safe. The other area that we're looking at on the decision is based on the governor's executive order. He directs who can come in regardless of the numbers and who's at risk. And uh, that, that's in that order. And so we are, are very much following that order as a district. And then one last thing is if um, we, we have some staff that are 
out due to their unavailable to come into school for multiple reasons, um, considerably uh, considering considering their health. And so staffing will be an issue um, as well. So those are the considerations. There's a lot. Again, I wanna reassure everybody at if and when um, the numbers go down and we're able to have students, um, majority of the students back in the building, we're prepared for those numbers. We have a plan in place at the high school. We're good to go. And I think I've told everybody we can go from zero to 40, 40 to 70, 70 to 140, 140 to 240, 240 to 400. I have those numbers down. I believe, Miss Yvonne, that number has been set in stone since July 11th. Or we've been working on those since July 11th. So we feel pretty confident about those uh, numbers. Um, we're prepared at the high school. We're ready to go. So uh, I just want you to have the confidence that when, when they say yes, we're ready to go. I mean, we have names down to who would go when. So we're prepared. So I just don't want you to think I'm making those decisions. Um, live tech support. This is a change, um, which is a, a, a positive change. We have live tech. And um, what live tech is from 7 to a.m. to 7 p.m., we will, the students will not get a recording. This is a contract, uh, a contract service. What they will do is they will come online. They will be asking you um, for the school district that you're from. They'll be asking um, the student's name, the student's school district, what school in the school district they attend, their phone number in case they get disconnected, the student's name. Um, they will look up um, what, repeat back the name, the spelling of the name of your child or parent, what issue they are having with the technology piece that they have. And then there is a, a identification number. We're calling it a sticker and they'll be asking for that sticker number, but it's live help and they will be directing us um, if we're having problems, what to do next. So um, in my conversation, with the company today, they are excited to help our kids. And I thought the person I talked to was uh, uh, customer service was was excellent. Um, I, he didn't know who I was when I started and he didn't change his demeanor once I told him who he was. So I thought they did a very nice job. Just um, so you know that this is live, it's no more a voicemail. And hopefully our kids will get the support that they need. The number hasn't changed. That number for tech support, Yvonne, correct me if I'm wrong, that's on our website as well. Correct, the phone number is on the website and something that we, we would like to mention to you is that before you have, before you head over to the school, if you can just please call this number because they're gonna help you troubleshoot in the phone call. And if no one is available, um, they're going to be giving you a phone call back. Technology has been amazing during this pandemic in helping all the students, either if you need to change a, phone, a Chromebook cord or if you need to change a Chromebook or anything like that. Um, so just make sure you call this phone number first before coming into the school because uh, you need they need to be prepared for you to come. So it's not that they're available right there at the window. So just give them a call here and then they will tell you when your stuff is gonna be ready at the window. Thank you for that. Any questions? Can we add that um, there will be Spanish speaking help for this? Thank you. And I believe there's also Somali. They're gonna be asking for at least a Spanish. Thank you for that, Irene. I know that they, they asked that in the uh, in introduction. Like they say, if it's Spanish, press one or two. Thank you for that. And then again, I just want to um, reiterate to all parents and, and guardians, please reach out to our teachers if you have any questions or concerns. 
uh, with the homework or with grades. Uh, they're more than happy to help. Um, as much as um, sometimes we're frustrated with our kids, please encourage your child, be positive, give them uh, every opportunity. It's very, it's very difficult times. I'd also ask that if you, um, if you have something positive to say about a teacher, some of us are, are at home and hearing some of our teacher's instruction. Um, if you hear something positive, please drop a note to our teachers. I think they're working really hard and are stressed over this uh, time of how they're delivering their education and, and uh, wanna make sure they're doing a good job. So uh, if you feel uh, like someone's doing a great job, I'd really appreciate it if you'd give them a shout out and um, encourage your child to reach out to their teachers. They have office hours and um, they're more than willing to help. So our goal is, is every year is to have that um, partnership with students, staff, uh, and parents to make sure that um, we have the, the best education we can give and supports for your child. So uh, please continue to be positive with your child it's difficult. This is not easy. And um, you know, shout out to yourselves. Thank you for being part of this meeting tonight, taking the time to be part of it and uh, supporting everybody. This is, this is what we're all about. This is what makes us real at Columbia Heights High School. And it, it, it's a village. So if you know somebody out there, uh, one of our families that needs some help, please let us know as well. Um, that, that's our goal is, as we keep it real, we're loyal to one another. We have a positive attitude, no matter what kind of pandemic we're in, we're going to have that positive attitude. We're going to respect one another and we're going to get that education. So I, I, I like to keep it real. And at that point, does anybody have any questions? I think this is it. This was the last slide. And, um, if anybody has any questions, please unmute yourself. I just want to say thank you for everything, everybody. You guys doing very good and hard job. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I, I don't want to prolong us any longer. I know there's a school board meeting that uh, some of us have to get to. Um, some of us haven't ate yet tonight, so I thank you all for uh, joining the meeting. When is the AP and ARC night being sent out? That link will be set out. Yvonne, I'm not going to say the December date right. December 2nd. Thank you. So it's going to be, uh, that information will be sent out uh, from Next Mr. Robleski in his all call, but it's going to be December 2nd. Uh, ARCC information is going to be at six o'clock and we will have a, um, our, our representative from Anoka Ramsey Community College, Kelsey Johnson. She's going to be with us at six and then Miss Gillis and I, uh, will be presenting about our AP courses for next year at seven o'clock. So December 2nd, ARCC is at 6 PM. AP is going to be at seven. Thank you, Mr. Miller, for that. All right, with that, um, you know, I just, uh, a side note, I want to wish everybody a um, uh, good time off, celebrate one another. Um, for those of you who are doing Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving to you. And um, as I always like to say, thank you for coming tonight. Be safe, wear your mask, and don't forget to keep it real. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was up. Thank you. One.